Welcome back to part two of Open Media Vault 6.9. In this video, we're going to run through getting storage set up. Let's jump into it. We're still going to log in with our default credentials, admin, and open Media Vault. And before we go too far, we want to check notifications. And of course, there are updates available. And like good front end soldiers in the battle for IT, we are going to run our updates before we do anything else. We come back to dashboard. We can now see that we are on version 6.9.1. Now, there are really a couple of steps that we need to take to get things prepared. We're going to start by going to storage and disks. And we can see we've got two disks. It's all the machine will support internally. The NVMe, which is our boot disk, and the SATA one terabyte disk right here. So we're going to go to File Systems. We're going to create and mount a file system. We're going to use ButterFS or BetterFS, depending on what you want to call it. We're going to select Single. And we're going to select the SATA disk and Save. We'll select the formatted volume and select save again and apply. So as you can see now, we've got dev SDA, which is our SATA disk. It's got a butter FS file system on it. It's mounted and its status is online, but we can't access it yet. We need to go to shared folders and add a shared folder. We're just going to call this test to start with. Select the file system. There's only one file system to select currently. The path is test slash and we can leave everything else in the default state. Save. Apply. Yes. But wait, there's more. We've set up the disk. We've created the shared folder. But we haven't turned on any services yet. Just for reference, if we jump back here to the dashboard, the only service that's enabled currently is SSH. So we need to jump to services. If you're in a primarily Mac OS and Linux environment, which they do exist out there, but most of the world lives in Windows land. So the common denominator file sharing protocol is SMB or SIFS. So we're going to select that. We're going to select shares. We're going to add a share. Select the folder. We've only got one test. We can create a comment. Test share. And we've got several options down here. Some that are universal, some that are platform specific such as time machine support we're going to start simple we're going to do the minimum viable configuration and we're just going to click save and you can see that after we apply it we are enabled the shared folder is called test comment is test share it's not public. 
It's not set to read only, it is browsable. But there's one additional step we want to take. We want to go to users. We're going to add a user. I'm just going to make one. All right. We can select groups. And there should be one. Just users. You can add an SSH public key if you'd like. And then save it. And apply. Yes. Okay, now we're ready to test. Here we are on my Mac desktop. We're going to hit Command K, which brings up the Connect to Server dialog. We are going to come up here. And we're going to put in the IP address, 74.141, and we're going to say connect. Well, the connect failed because I left out one important thing. Under services, SMB SIFS, settings, we need to enable everything that we just set up. Come down to save, apply, yes. And now, if we try to connect again, you are attempting to connect to the server, 172.16.74.141, connect. And since I use the same credentials as my Mac, we are automatically connected. Now we're going to create a folder here and we're just going to call it Mac OS. But I know a lot of you are using Windows, so let's do the same thing in Windows. Here we are on our Windows 10 test machine. We're going to open up File Explorer and we're going to do double backslash and our IP address 172.16.74.141 and we've got our test folder. Again, since the credentials are the same, I can come in here and I can create a new folder. We're going to call it Windows. But wait, there's more. Let's do the same thing in Linux. In this case, we're using Sparky Linux. The file system. And we can come down here where it says Browse Network. And we've got OMV B-Link SSH and OMV B-Link SMB SIFs. And test. Credentials are different here, so we'll use registered user and we'll enter the password. And as you can see here, we've got the same options. We can add a folder. Now we've got folders for Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. All right, we're back on our dashboard here. As you can see now, we have SMB SIFs as well as SSH enabled. To recap what we've done, we added our disk, we added a file system, we added a shared folder, we added a user, and we came into services, we created a share. and we enabled the service. Now, there are many more things that we can do with Open Media Vault. And over the course of some future videos, we will be exploring some of those, such as enabling NFS 
as a protocol, which it's not widely known outside of IT circles that you can use NFS on Windows and Mac OS. It's not just for Linux and BSD. So we will enable that and we will test that on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. And we may do some benchmarks between SIFs and NFS to see which one performs better. Spoiler alert, it's not SIFs. So, in an effort to keep this as short as possible, I'm going to cut this off here. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. We're in the final stages of our push to 5,000 subscribers, and we might just pull it off before the end of September. So if you know anybody that might find value in this video, please pass it on and encourage them to like and subscribe as well. Until next time, this is Jeremy for the Practical IT Channel. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.